guys, and welcome to another episode of The Unlock Show. I'm your host, Tracy Wilson. Most of you guys know who I am now, and uh, because you've been inside of the Success Secrets for Business, Family and Life Facebook group. And if you haven't, boy, oh boy, you need to get yourself on over to Facebook and look us up for underneath um, Success Secrets for Business, Family and Life. And when you get inside of that Facebook group, you'll see that I do a show on a regular basis inside of there along with a bunch of other people that uh, do shows to help you thrive in your family, your business, and your life, as it says. Today, I want to say to you guys, if you are a coach, consultant, business owner who is thinking about or already has a webinar that you are using to promote your business, then today's show is going to be right up your alley because I have Steve Warner with me today. I'll tell you a little bit about Steve in a moment. But uh, I'm going to tell you that you want to be listening to him. He knows what he's talking about when it comes to webinars, all things webinars. And we're going to kind of like get rid of, we're going to put the, he calls it the death to bad webinars. So we're going to make sure that we are, uh, you know, we put it to anything bad when it comes to webinars. Because I don't know about you, but I've sat through lots and lots and lots of them. And there are some of them that I stay right the way to the end because I absolutely love them. And there are others that I just go, oh my God click the button and I'm out of here before they even get to the point of telling me what their secrets are, what their recipe is. I don't even get to that point because it's so, I want to use the word, that shit boring. But anyway, that being said, let me introduce Steve Warner. Steve and I go back um, quite some time. I was on his show a few weeks ago and he reminded me that we actually met on a boat in the Bahamas about uh, almost two years ago, just a little over two years ago now. But since I've known Steve, he has really, really um, crafted his theory and his messaging and his skill set around webinars. And he's become very, very good at it. And no one in the industry is somebody that you'll go to if you want to create a converted webinar. Because as we all know, just having a webinar, if the damn thing doesn't do anything for you. So we want to make sure that it actually converts. There is a, there is a reason why you have a webinar. So welcome to the show, Steve. Awesome to have you here. And what he's going to do is he has hat he's got on, he's going to give us some clarity around what webinars are all about and what makes a good one compared to one that you just want to put a complete into. Awesome. Tracy, thank you so much for having me on. Um, I always, always love chatting with you. So we actually met, we met in person on a boat, but we did a zoom call probably two and a half years ago i don't know if you remember that do you remember the topic of that call very very clearly actually and i remember i, I want to i want to tell the story sorry steve i'm going to jump in because i'm going to say just so that you guys know steve warner was the reason that i actually took some action on something so he is dead right we met in person on the boat but we actually met long before that and we're having conversations offline before I actually saw him in person. And one of these specific conversations offline, he gave me this like a brilliant idea, which put $30,000 in my pocket, I'm gonna say, and I was able to create an amazing experience for somebody. So that just goes to show the brilliance of the man, of Steve Warner, and how that whole scenario of me having that conversation with him it, it actually does relate to what he's now teaching in terms of webinars. So sorry, Steve, I wanted to jump in there because that was a, it was actually a pivotal moment um, in you know in my business and some of the things that I was doing. And it was actually as a result of a conversation that you and I had that the penny dropped, and I was like, ah, boom, that's what I'm going to do. That I mean, it it when she says that it resulted in thirty thousand dollars in her bank account, it was within I want to say less than a week, yeah, maybe. Was. It was a few days. Literally, I walked away from that conversation because I had sort of had an I had kind of some ideas in my mind, and then Steve was like, "You need to do that," and I was like, "Oh yeah, that's what I need to do." Walked away from that, created an entire offer in a day, put together the entire sales process in that day, and within I reckon it was within three to five days that uh, that entire process was turned around, money and bank account. Uh, you know, flights booked, things were starting to happen. So, yeah, that was the entire, that was the process in its entirety from beginning of conversation right the way through to, you know, increasing the bank account. So if you're listening to this and you're like, what in the world did you do? 
it actually was crafting an offer. Tracy came to me with an idea. She came with an idea of what she wanted to do. We spent about two hours on a Zoom call. That's what sticks in my head. This was almost three years ago now. But we walked through how to create that offer and what it would look like. And it was actually a lot different than what she came on the call at the beginning with. We got some whiteboards, we sat down, we brainstormed a whole bunch of stuff and I laid out a framework which wasn't a webinar, but it, at the time I held live events. Pre-COVID, I held live events. I helped coaches, consultants, authors, bloggers hold a live event and sell a high ticket offer. When Tracy came on, we sat down and went through what that would look like. And I said, honestly, you don't need a live event. You have everything that you need right now to go make this offer to the right person. And to Tracy's credit, most people would stop right there. They would say, that's what I'm doing, um, but, and then they would let all the negative voices in their head talk them out of doing it. Instead, Tracy sat down, wrote it out, made the offer to the right person, and closed 30K. Um, so you're probably like, oh, tell us more, tell us more. The whole secret, the whole secret of having a webinar that converts starts with your offer. And some of you out there say, well, I have an offer. I do X, Y, Z. So I'm just going to tell you right off the bat, it is having a main offer, having five line items that go underneath that offer that support it, as well as two bonuses. That's where we start with everybody. We outline all of those things. And you might say, well, I have an offer. I don't have all of those things. And I would say, step back and come up with your story. Your story is what defines your entire webinar. Webinars that you've got on, I mean, Tracy, you hit this perfectly. How many of you listening have been on a webinar in the last six months? Everyone? How many of you have fallen asleep on a webinar in the last six months or jun jumped off of one and gone on to Facebook or, I don't know, gotten up and done anything other than the webinar? Just like Tracy said, you didn't even stay to learn what they were teaching because it was just so boring that you had to get off of it, right? What changes this, and as far as I know, I'm the only person who teaches this, is there are eight stories that you need to have in your webinar. The main one being your hero's journey. Everyone's heard of the hero's journey. Well, where does that go in your webinar? It goes right at the very front. You should be there within 90 seconds of starting your webinar. This grabs people, pulls them in, establishes your authority, and helps them move forward. From your hero's journey is actually where we start to pull out the items that build your stack. The main item, the five light items, and the two bonuses. All of those should connect somewhere in your hero's journey. The other thing that we pull out of your hero's journey is your teaching point stories. Now, everybody knows that you should teach something on your webinar, right? Tracy, you know that, right? I want you guys to close your eyes for a second. Hi. I want you to think. Go back to high school, go back to college, and I want you to remember who is your favorite teacher? Who is the teacher that you love going to class, you enjoyed learning from, they always made you smile? You have a picture of that person, right? Now I want you to think of your least favorite teacher. You would probably go into their class and they would be at the board. They were speaking in a really monotone, boring voice. They were writing or had a dry erase marker or whatever. Mine was algebra, right? The guy's just going at it on the board as soon as you walk in. And if you're like me, you either put your head down and fell asleep, you pass notes, or you just ran out the back door, right? Who wants to listen to somebody like that? This was school where there was punishment if you didn't learn. Now I want you to, everybody has those two pictures, right? What was the difference? The difference was not that you learned more from this person. The difference was the amount that they taught. The person who taught more actually made your brain shut down because you go into overload. It's too much. It's boring. It's not engaging. So you shut down. Even though you had punishment attached to not learning, most people shut down. The teacher that you loved was more engaging. They told better stories. They knew your name. They made you laugh. All of these things are what makes a great webinar, but the reason that nobody uses them is because our ego tells us that we have to teach as much as possible. We have to cram 10 years of knowledge 
into a 30 minute presentation. And if we don't, everyone's going to laugh at us. That's, that's our inner voice chomping away in our head, right? So what do we do? We talk as fast as we can and we put as much knowledge in it as we can, which in turn does the exact opposite of what we want to happen. People fall asleep, people get overloaded and they run away. So how do you fix this? You tell great engaging stories. I've told you four stories so far in this, what, five minute segment that have got you to lean in. They've got you to listen. They've got you to future pace. That's what a good webinar does. It gets you to lean in, gets you to enjoy the process, and it gets you, most importantly, to see what I am telling you in your business. It helps you learn that, oh, I could totally do that. So something that I'll point to earlier, we did an open loop. When I was talking about the stuff with Tracy, Tracy, this was not the plan for this conversation. We didn't talk about this beforehand at all. But there was an open loop. It got you to lean in and say, what did you, what was the conversation that you guys had that made $30,000? When you create open loops on your webinar that tie to what you are selling, people will buy without any reluctance. They won't have a wall. So how do you create open loops? Using stories. Your hero's journey story creates at least three big open loops that drive to what you're selling at the end. Each one of your teaching point stories opens up at least one. All of your testimonial stories open up at least one open loop that go to the end to the stack. When you do that, people have to stay on your webinar because you're opening the loop. They're leaning in and they're like, how do I get that? How do I get that powerful result? And the way you get that is by creating the open loops that go to the end. So many people just lecture, lecture, lecture. They're packing in as much information as they can, which is fed by our egos and causes people to bounce off. That's... And that's that's an interesting concept, Steve, but so true. And our natural instinct is to, oh, I've got to try and get out as much information as I possibly can in a condensed space of time. Like you say, there's a very specific way of doing that and then understanding you know, which stories and which messaging you should, which components you should actually teach, what messaging and stories should go to go with that. And this is really, what I love about this is it speaks very much to um, even the process that, that we teach in, in the program that I run, which is that connection between, we call it the ACE method, which is building your authority, building connection with people through the stories and the messaging that you have, and then also building, you know, engagement and also exposure. So having those things and starting, what's interesting too that you talked about is actually starting with at the end. So we're almost reverse engineering everything. And that's obviously a big mistake that a lot of people make. They start with the webinar, work their way through the webinar and then go, okay, well, now what could I actually offer somebody? What what could I, what sort of offer could I make when in fact you actually want to start, like you say, start with the offer, reverse engineer it and work your way backwards. Well, that's, so... I'll, I'll speak to that directly. When we built live events, the way that we always build live events is what is the outcome that you want? Because once you have the outcome, then you have the stories. Once you have the stories, you have the teaching. For a live event specifically, that covers the three days of the live event. But it also speaks to nine months of marketing out in front. What are all the stories that you're going to tell in your email, in your Facebook Lives, in all your advertising that are gonna get people to lean in? What is the lead magnet that comes before what you are selling? So I don't know, let's say that you're selling a coaching program on weight loss. I always use weight loss because I think it's really easy. Well, what is something that you can give away as a lead magnet that will attract people who want to lose weight but does not specifically speak to weight loss, because what you're really doing is getting people on the list so that they have to come to the live event, right? Yeah. The same thing we do with webinars actually now, we create a lead magnet and on the thank you page of the lead magnet, we deliver the webinar. But the webinar, you, you see the difference there. So if it's weight loss, it might be how to have better mental habits that make you feel better about your life. That's something that people who want to lose weight want. So we can put that in front and then the weight loss is actually a new opportunity to them. Mm -hmm. It gets the pivot to happen, which gets people to lean in. So, and to your speaking of the ACE method, 
that is great as well. The whole point of a webinar, the reason that I love webinars, I love speaking on stage, Zig Ziglar said it best. His quote is, sales is nothing more than the transference of energy, certainty, energy, certainty, and excitement about what you sell from yourself to the person buying. If that's true, nothing does that better than being in front of them, talking to them. They should see your face. They should see your hand movements. I love that we're live right now. Do you know how many people turn off their camera for webinars? I'm sorry. I'm looking at Tracy, but the camera's up here. But yeah. More than 80% of webinars don't have a person on the screen. You are losing out on money. Turn your camera on. Be excited. Talk with your hands. Get excited. Click on that action, Steve, because I did... Some time ago when I first started out doing webinars, and you know, a lot of people feel like this, oh, I'm gonna do my first webinar, I'm a bit frightened, so therefore I'll hide behind my PowerPoint, right? I've been there, I've done that. The moment I actually, and I twigged onto this, this is, this for me, like I got a bit of confidence, I feel like I'm really comfortable with the content of what I, what I was talking about. Now it's time to actually show my face, for them to be able to see who is this person behind the mask of this PowerPoint presentation. Who is it? As soon as I did that and I started presenting with my face on the screen with the PowerPoint presentation, my sales and my results increased. And I increased, like I was converting, and I still do convert at about 80%. So I convert really, really highly because of all the, the things that you're talking about are super important. When you start to make these subtle twists and subtle changes, pivots to everything that you're doing, and I would say that that is, the, that is actually the one thing that made the biggest difference. It actually wasn't the content of the webinar because it changed nothing else. The only thing I did was put my mug on the screen so that they could actually see who they were talking to, build connection and trust through you know, your body language. You're, ex you're talking about excitement and that energy, that transference of, of energy. People can feel that, but they can't feel it if it's just sort of one-dimensional through your voice and, and PowerPoint presentation. So um, that is a fantastic point that you make and it makes a massive difference. It's So I wanna talk about two points with that. I mean, everybody has heard that 90% of communication is not the words. The words only make up 10% of communication. So when you turn your camera off, you're giving up 90% of your communication effectiveness. And the reason Everything points back to ego. Like this is such a weird thing to talk about with webinars, but our ego, like we're sitting there, right? Like, just like you said, oh, I'm nervous. I'm not sure what people are going to think about me. I don't know if I look good. Oh my goodness. Nobody cares about any of that stuff. Like how many webinars have you watched? How many YouTube channels have you watched? You might think like, oh, that person's not that good looking. Or I mean, I don't know, that person's got a big nose or he's wearing a funny colored shirt or he's got a hat that says clarity. I don't give up, right? Like none of that matters to me. My ego is gone because I don't care. What I care is, can I change somebody's life? Can I make the world a better place? Like I've if you believe in what you sell and you believe that what you do makes a difference, you have a moral obligation to get your message out. And that means it doesn't matter what you look like, what you feel like. Commitment doesn't care how you feel. It cares if you show up. Um, Sean Stevenson is where, like, that's where the light bulb for this went on for me. Uh, if you don't know Sean, he's he's like one of the people that has like midget disease. He's like the size of a basketball. Um, he looks funny. He talks funny, but he does not care at all. He is out there like preaching his truth and he changes lives. And I'm like, wow, if he can do that, there's no reason I can't do that. Right. Um, Absolutely. I mean, and that, that's about us having the intention and being there for the right reason. Right. So you're right. there, not for yourself. And and I'm going to say, Steve, that sometimes when you're starting out, you know, you most people start with ego because, you know, you're frightened, you're afraid, you're focused on your, you're, you're focused on yourself or, how am I going to do this? Is this all going to go right? But the, the, that, um, again, that pivot is transferring the focus from yourself. Now to focusing on the audience and delivering something amazing to them. And when you do that, you know, the fact that I'm, I'm actually traveling right now, so I'm actually at my cousin's place, I'm not in my normal environment. You know, lighting is not fantastic here. Does that, like you were saying, it's about commitment. It's still, I'm a little dark today. Does it matter? No, you still come, you show up, you deliver the best you possibly can. And the fact that I'm a little dark today, well. Who cares? So, 
Yeah, that's, moving on. You know, and that's and that's what you get to because you're here for a different. You know, we're not here for us. We're here for the audience. Well, the other. I mean, you are a hundred percent correct. The other thing that I'll say, if you're sitting there, if you're watching this, and you're like, I, I don't know, I can't do it. Like people buy from people they know, like, and trust and nothing builds trust more than authenticity. Be authentic, be who you are. I'm going to stumble over my words. I'm going to have some words that I don't pronounce well. I'm going to go back and forth with Tracy, right? Tracy might have dark lighting, but everybody knows that she's real. Everyone knows that she's showing up. People don't want to buy from the person that's way up here on the mountain that they cannot relate to. People want to buy from people that they can relate to that they know are one or two steps ahead of them. So that's the other thing. I'm going to circle this back to webinars. When you're teaching, the reason that we try to cram all of it in is because we want to look like the expert, right? But nobody wants that. What they want, you're in an eight, nine, or 10. They're at a one or a two. Your whole goal on the webinar is to move them one level, not to take them from a one or a two to an eight, nine, or 10. It is impossible. And nobody will physically, mentally believe that they can do that. If, if you had somebody that says, I can teach you how to make a million dollars in 30 minutes, do you believe that? Like, you might want to believe that, but rationally you can't. But if you had somebody say, I can teach you how to make a thousand dollars in the next 30 minutes, much more believable. Mm -hmm. That's all like, I don't think either of those are the topic of a webinar, but you see how I trust that person because yeah, I believe that I can learn how to do that. Same thing is true with the webinar. Don't try to move people all the way up to a level eight, nine, or 10. Try to move them one level. They'll trust you more and they'll get the aha. They'll get into momentum on your webinar. And once they get into some momentum, it is much easier to sell them because you have the open loops that are driving out here to the close and they'll naturally buy. Let's help everybody understand when we talk about an open loop, mm -hmm. let's about what it is and how we create one and you know how they actually insert those into the right places in their webinar so an open loop is anything that gets people to wonder how did they do that what does that look like you're creating raw curiosity around something and then you're future pacing them to a, a moment in time that is down the road so tracy let's do this with your book yeah, sure thing. All right. So Tracy, for those of you who don't know, wrote an amazing book called The She-Myth, right? And The She-Myth talks all about women's empowerment in business, right? Mm -hmm. Well, how if there were three... Place a woman in business. Uh-huh. If there were... Th Good. How many things do you think you teach in that book? Three, five, seven? Well, there's actually a three-step process that we teach in that book. What is the outcome of that process? The outcome of that process is that we get women to understand that they have the power to stand up, stand firm and stand out so that they can take their place at the table as a very successful woman in business. Okay, so in order to know, we didn't tell you what the three-step process was. We told you the outcome of the process. By saying the outcome and getting people to say, I want that outcome and saying, cool, well, I go into depth in all three areas that you need to do. I have a very clear framework. It's do A, do B, and do C, and you will get X outcome. You will get the outcome. You'll be able to take your place at a table as a woman and have a successful business. That's an open loop. So we open the loop, and the only way that they can close the loop is to buy the book. The way you know this, that you did this correctly on a webinar is you have people type into the chat, tell me how you did that. How do I get that result? If they start saying those kind of things, then you've done an open loop correctly. Mm -hmm. So how many of you right now are saying, just tell me how to do an open loop? You'll notice that I just gave you an open loop. Absolutely. And, and that, I mean, it's very, um, it's it's clever in the way in which you do it, but there is a there is a system and a, and a process, right, of doing that. And once you learn the system and the process of doing it, then you have the key to be able to do it over and over and over again. Hey guys, that was another open loop. There you go. So that's kind of, you know, as Steve and I are talking, we're demonstrating on the fly how this actually works. Because that, like you said, it creates that level of curiosity of, 
Okay, so how do I actually do it? Now, here's, an, here's another interesting thing. When we're doing webinars, Steve, and I'm interested in your um, in your feedback about this, but before I get there, actually, I want to tell you something else. So the outcome of that book, too, is that women who read it will have more success and more prosperity in their life. So if that's, what, if that's the outcome that you're looking for, the steps that we provide you inside of the program actually lead to that outcome. More discernment, more success, more prosperity, and enabling you to have the confidence to, to, to step up, stand firm and stand out, right? So coming back to this whole, um, this webinar piece. So the webinar piece around, should we be, um, in like, what should we actually be teaching in there? Teaching the, the what and the why, but do you teach the how? So, okay. Yes, you should. The difference is, instead of trying to take people to an eight, nine, or 10, try to take them, imagine they are at a two and you are giving them the how to get to a three. That's it. The reason you want them to feel like they have forward momentum. You want them to get some kind of result. You're not taking them all the way to the end result. You're moving them one step forward. So the how, you want the why, why is this important? What is it? So we just went through open loops. We showed you what they were and we showed you why they were important. The how that I'll give you is that you just need to remove whatever the step-by-step -step process is from what you're teaching people. So in Tracy's example, if we were using, so you can do this with, uh, I'll give you, I'll give you guys a little bit of secrets. So if you use this with a client testimonial, what you want to talk about is all the testimonial pain points up front. Where was the client struggling? So if we go back to weight loss, um, you know, Joe had really low energy. He had a hard time getting out of bed. He knew he was about 30 pounds overweight. Uh, he would get up in the morning and he would, you know, hit snooze five or six times. He would rush out of bed. He'd jump into the shower. And then because he didn't have time to eat, he would just slam some cereal and a couple donuts on the way to work. He had really, really bad energy, bad skin. Um, and he was putting on weight all the time. He had a hard time going on dates because none of his clothes fit and he always felt really self-conscious and it was affecting his life all over the place. He wasn't showing up confident at work. Whole bunch of pain points. Well then... Hold there for just one moment, Steve, because I want to make a couple of points with those yep. stories that you told. So with those stories, what I like about those is because they are then the stories that are to connect and resonate with the audience that you are trying to talk to. What you want, what Steve's doing there is he's actually saying, hey, this person was just like you. And so he's created a connection there. And now we'll move on to the next piece. Well, that's, you're exactly right. So the pain points in your testimonial story should mirror the pain points of your ideal client, because then your clients will lean in. And now they're all leaning in and they're like, dude, I am just like Joe. So now we skip the how Joe got result, and we create the open loop. What we say is, Joe found me. He found a Facebook ad that I did, and he bought my program, worked with me in coaching, and through our three-step patented process, Joe lost more than 45 pounds in the next 60 days. Now Joe leaps out of bed when his alarm goes off. He's up right away. He sleeps on less than six hours of sleep a night, but he is thriving. He's got a ton of energy. His confidence has soared. He now had to go out and buy an entire new wardrobe, and he looks sharp because he's confident in his body image. He shows up at work with more confidence than anyone else, and because he's in sales, this means that he makes more sales. He's actually given himself a $20,000 raise. All of this just from working with me and following our patent and process. Everybody now is like, give me the process. What's the process? Well, when you spend $9.97, you can get our process. Or when you jump on a call with me, I'll be happy to show you how this process works for you because it's specific to each person. If you're driving to sales calls, this is one of the best way to get people on the phone. I've heard this process um, also referred to as like salting. Right, so I don't know if you've heard, what, like, heard of it in this manner, but you know, you're salting somebody's appetite. You're, you're, and what happens when you put salt in somebody's mouth? If you say to them, "Here, have a spoonful of salt," what are they going to be, you know, grabbing for? Well, that water. So, and the water becomes the solution 
to resolving that problem. So you're going to salt their appetite and then you're going to offer the water, which is the solution to quenching the thirst that they've just created. And that's essentially what Steve is just taking you through with the process of using that example of just a client testimonial. And so what you're saying here, Steve, is that using client testimonials and like sprinkling them throughout your webinar is, an, is another fantastic way of being able to continually salt somebody's appetite and get them to the point where by the time they finish the webinar, like they're so darn thirsty that there is that the most logical solution is for them to buy your product, for them to right. want to do more business with you, right? Correct. So I guess to speak to that point just a little bit tighter, when you use the client testimonials, we used a very generic one, right? Uh, Joe had the problems of low energy, not fitting in his clothes and low self-esteem, low confidence at work. If we were dialing this in even tighter, uh, in your webinar, as a general rule, you want to have at least 15 testimonials. That's what the decent webinars have. Really good ones have 25 or more. I've seen some that have more than 40. Now, when I say that, that does not mean that all of them take 90 seconds. Some of them are a single line. Joe had low energy. He took this module of our course and now he has unlimited energy. That's a real simple one, right? The You'll see how that testimonial just deals with one specific thing. And ideally in your webinar, instead of having generic kind of blanket ones that deal with all of them, you want to have a lot of very specific ones. So this speaks to knowing your avatar, knowing the people who are on your webinar and what are their specific objections, and then finding client testimonials. Do not manufacture them. Do not lie. Find real testimonials of people you've worked with. And if you say, well, Steve, I don't have any testimonials, go out and serve some people. Get at least three or four people that you have served in some capacity that can give you the testimonials. Otherwise, you have no business doing a webinar. Um, go help some people first. Because the webinar is a scaling solution. It is not the very first thing that you should do. You should go serve some people because that's going to give you all the stories. That's going to give you all the tools. That's going to help you know that your stack and the things that you're offering are really what people want. Otherwise, you're going to spend a lot of time, energy, and money building all this out to launch it and find out that it's not correct. So go help some people first. It's the validation process. I validate it. Is this, this thing that I'm going to be spending a lot of time and effort on creating, is it actually going to be worth my time and effort in doing so? So there's a few questions. I'm actually looking at some of the um, the live chat that's coming through. So people sure. are asking, this stuff uh, both live and automated webinar? Yep. Um, so I actually, I'm going to, I'm going to kick a myth. Um, If you're doing an automated webinar, in my opinion, it is better to run it as a VSL. Tell people that it is automated. Tell people, hey, this is a training that I did a couple of weeks ago. I put it up here so that you could have instant access to it. Still have an opt-in in front of it. Have, if it's a lead magnet, I recommend doing a lead magnet. Then when they opt in, have the free training and then have a 12-step email sequence driving back to the free training with a cart close. That works very well and people will respect you. Again, this is being authentic. People will 100% respect you saying this is not live because we've all been on the live webinar that isn't live and we're like, this is such BS. Don't lie to people, just tell them, hey, this is a training I did a few weeks ago. It's definitely current. It's here because I want you to have instant access to it. Please enjoy. If there's anything I can do to help you, please reach out to me. You, you would be surprised how many people, if you say, email me if you have a specific question, people will email you if they have access to their email, especially if you're driving back to them using that 12, sorry, I'm drawing on the screen. I'm, I'm pretty hand talk with my hands a lot. If you have a 12 step email sequence and you say, Hey, if you have questions over anything in the webinar, email me, you'll be surprised how many people will hit reply and email you a question that opens up the sales conversation. Like, yeah. it, so to go back to automated and live, live will definitely work. Here's the thing. You are going to spend a ton of money to get people on. What I would recommend for doing your live is do it once you have a list and you have some JV partners, or if you're training inside of a group, do it live. 
once you have that and it's good and you've done it at least five times, you want to do it at least five times live, even if you're just doing it to yourself, you want to get it really good, then take that and turn it into a VSL. That's my recommendation. Um, you've seen, I mean, I've seen Frank Kern take his VSL and just run Facebook ads to it. I don't know that I necessarily recommend that. Like he uploaded it on his business page and just had it there with a link where they could go to the sales page. I don't know that I really recommend that. He did it for retargeting purposes, which is not the purpose of this conversation. Um, I recommend lead magnet to VSL. Uh, I do recommend doing it live. Teach it in groups, find places that you can teach it. Even if it's five or six people, the yeah. fewer people you have on, a lot of people get upset, right? They're like, oh, I have four people. Talk to those people, call them out by name. You can interact with them. Um, one of the breakthroughs that I had around live events, when I started holding live events, my goal was to put 800 people in a room. Mm -hmm. What I found out is that having 40 or less people in the room skyrocketed my close rate and cut my costs. I could hold a 40 person event for less than $1,000 and close $150,000 out of that room because you close better when you can actually have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people. So you can do this on a webinar. If you have five, six, seven people on, call them out by name. Make sure their camera is on. Hey, Joe, I see you over there. Make sure your camera's on. My camera's on. I want to see you because I want to be able to help you as much as possible. Make it about them. If I can see you, then I can actually have a conversation and include them throughout the webinar. If you do this, you will close very well on a smaller webinar. Absolutely. I mean, uh, what I, I love the, the steps. I'm just going to go back to these, um, to, to the framework that Steve has kind of shared with us. So just so that we really understand the components of what's, you know, of what he's put, what he's recommending, we put it here. Starting with your lead magnet. Then you, on the thank you page, you're going to be taking them to some sort of training. That live is either live, which will be your webinar, or you're going to be very authentic and upfront and telling people that it is a recorded webinar. Not looking like, hey, this is live when it's really not because that's a load of BS and probably going to unravel a whole lot of, you know, trust, trust and authority that you have built before you even get going. So really important that we are open, honest and upfront with what it is that we're doing from the get go. Deliver the live training. And then, of course, then after the fact, you're going to then be adding the 12 steps email sequence that uh, that Steve is also recommending we do to continue to nurture those people that are there. And then I think the other really, um, really great components of what Steve has talked about, he's given us some gems of things that we can do. Turn our camera on, make sure that we get the really good connection with people, use their names, get our audience to actually be involved in what's going on. So like with these shows, everybody's, you know, we've got people here, I can see the chat coming through. I'm actually um, answering questions that our, that our viewers are putting you know, I put it on the screen and often I'll say, hi, Vicky, hi, Robin. And uh, I can see a whole bunch of other people that are also on here too, uh, which is, I think I also see, saw Karen and a, and a few other people. So anyway, you know, saying things like that, it makes them feel a little bit special, like, oh my God, he's talking to me. And I've actually got an example of that, Steve. One awesome. day I was on a, it was actually a telesales seminar, seminar. So it wasn't even a webinar, so it was telesales. And it was with um, Christian Michelson, if I remember correctly. Anyhow, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in bed. I'm in my pajamas. He's doing this stuff. And then he was like, okay, I'm going to take three people from the audience or from, the, from you know, the audience that's listening today, and I'm going to do blah, blah, blah with you right now. And I'm like, okay, cool. Next minute, Tracy Wilson, you're up. I was like, oh, my God, holy heck. Okay, so I quickly got myself organized. But that, that then, see, now I remember his name. That was probably, I reckon, five years ago that I was on that webinar. I remember the moment. I remember who it was. I remember what he did. I remember his name. And if, if he came out with something else, I would I continue to follow him. And I would buy his stuff. Because in that moment, he felt like I mattered. He made me feel like I mattered to him. And I think that's um, that's a really important thing that, as I just stated, five years later, I still praise the man. That's, I mean, that is very, I mean, that in live events, we did that on purpose. We would look at 
all of the stuff that they were doing, um, like people coming in, I so that I knew their stuff in the back of my head. Tony Robbins actually does this. If you ever get to go to a Tony Robbins event and you get to see the stage, like he has 20,000 people now. But if you ever get to go up to the stage, you'll see that he actually prints out poster size pictures of people that he knows are either suicidal or have a major problem. And he knows what section they're sitting in. Now, some people might say this is like mechanical, but he'll go find those people and he knows enough to have a conversation with them. You can do the same thing at a live event. On a webinar, it's a little harder because the people are just coming in, right? Like they're not doing a survey. If you try to do a survey to get people into a webinar, don't do it. It's not going to work, but you can still have a conversation with them. You can still totally talk to them. Like you want to take trial closing to another level. Trial closes are where you get people involved. Every two to three slides, you should have a question that gets people involved. You guys seen how powerful this is? You guys see how this could work in your business? Do you see how having being authentic and telling people that it's not a live webinar will help your authenticity? Those are all yes questions that are getting you involved. If I see somebody nodding their head, like I can see Tracy right now, right? I can say, Tracy, you totally get this. Do you see, like, tell me how this is going to work in your business. I want to see you type it in the chat. If you do that every time you do a live webinar, it doesn't matter whether you have five or eight people on, you're going to make sales because um, people will remember. So I know we got, um, I, I just turned on the chat. I forgot we even had chat. Um that stuff coming in so i'm just going to also look at it but i want to i want to just check um steve because one of the things that we were talking about earlier was like why getting a maybe is actually the key to doubling your business we might have covered that but let's just make sure we absolutely have um because a lot of people go oh maybe and maybe is it no um not true right so okay i am so glad you brought this up um I'm going to pre-frame it by saying a lot of people ask me, how, how do I get my webinar shorter? How do I make it so that people actually stay to the pitch? Well, it's not about getting people to stay to the pitch. It's about getting involvement. It's about creating those open loops that hook people to the end. But here's the thing. As soon as you make your offer, you want to have your first price up on the screen within three minutes. The reason being like we talked about, right? You have that main thing that you're offering. You want that to be up and you want to have a price up. 95% of people at this point are going to say, maybe. If you've done a good job of establishing rapport, getting people to know, like, and trusting you and showing authenticity and authority in the front part of your webinar, at this point, people want what you have. They're going to say, maybe. I want you guys to think really really shortly for like the last purchase that you made that was a couple thousand dollars. It could be a computer. It could be a car. It could be a vacation. It could be a new, new piece of furniture. I don't know what it is. For me, it was a computer. You guys got that in your head? I want you to think for a second, even though you know you wanted to buy it, you probably picked out the model that you wanted, whether whatever it was. You probably read Amazon reviews. You probably Googled it. You knew you wanted to buy it. You had the money. You had the credit card in hand. Emotionally, you wanted to buy it. Logically, you needed convinced. Yeah. This is why maybe is the key to making more sales. The minute they say maybe, they are leaning in and saying, tell me more. Help my brain logically commit to buying. So how do you do that? This is where the line items and the bonuses come in. Each line item should line up directly with an objection as to why people like the logical objection that you need to overcome. So if you know that this is time or money, those are probably the two biggest. What specific stories and what specific items can you give them in your line items in your stack to overcome those objections? Think about that for a second. Absolutely. And that comes, sorry guys, can you hear that? Like, just so you know, I'm trapping right now and I heard that noise. And I'm like, what is that? Who has a home phone these days? <laughs> I don't think I've heard that sort of noise for probably five years because I don't have a phone at home. So I'm traveling at the moment. I'm at somebody else's house and wherever you know that those things, those things really, called telephones. Yeah, yeah, that, that old thing that you, yeah. So anyway, they must have a telephone somewhere around here. So apologies for that. You know, it's real. That's what happens, right? We're, we're on the move. It's but all good. 
what actually happens with that, right, Steve, is that as we're when we're making that buying decision, we're making the initial decision based on our emotions. It's like, oh yes, I want that. I've linked in. I'm interested. I want to know more. Maybe I want this. Then the logical part of my brain starts to kick in, and it's like, okay, now let me justify this with my logic, and that's normally what happens. And I've, you know, I'm doing that right now because we do a lot of family camping and I need a new camping fridge. So that exact scenario that you just took us through in terms of, hey, I need one, I want one, I've got to find one, um, you know, got my eye on one, but now I'm in the process of research mode because now my logical brain is kicking in as to which one should I actually buy. I'm going to buy one. I've now found the one that I'm going to buy and now I will pull my credit card out and start and purchase it. So that right. exact same process is actually happening in a very condensed space of time in a webinar, which brings me to my next question, because this is a question I get all the time. Time frame. Mm -hmm. How long should your webinar be? Is there a sweet spot? Sure. So I'm going to, there, there are two parts to this question. The first one is, it is not how long your total webinar is, it is how long from the minute you start until the minute you put the first price up on the screen, because that's where you get the maybe. If that is longer than about 55 minutes, you are going to lose people. 40 to 45 minutes is ideal if you're driving to a phone call, 25 minutes. So when you're actually asking for money, you want it to be between 45 and 55 minutes to get to when the price goes on the screen. That is when you're going to get the maybe. We've seen numbers, like it starts to fall down after 55 minutes. After that though, you should stay on as long as you have something to say. So you get through the entire offer. You get through the whole stack. You get through all the bonuses. At this point, you should start answering questions. You should start overcoming objections. You should start talking about testimonials that you have, people that you've worked with. Because here's the thing. Let's say you get to the end and you have, I don't know, let's say you had 20 people on at the start of your offer. Let's say that you have 18 on at the end. Those 18 want to buy. The reason they are still there listening if their camera is on and they're looking at you is because they want to buy what you have. You just haven't said the right thing. So keep talking. Figure it out. I call them out sometimes. Hey, Joe, tell me why you're here. Um, I can tell you're interested. You're nodding. You're telling me all this stuff. And if he says, well, I'm here because my sister said that I really needed this. Okay, cool. What's going on with you, man? Like, talk to them. If they say, well, I just wanted to support you. Cool. Awesome. Thanks. But as long as you have people there, continue talking. They will remember that. This is the time that you can do a hot seat with them. You can overcome their objections specifically. Um, the second piece that I want to follow up to is how long, like you should have urgency and scarcity built in. Your second bonus should only be for three, four, five people that are on your webinar to get them to take action because now they've made a maybe declaration, right? They've said maybe, they're on the maybe fence. You've given them six reasons to back up their logic to buy. At this point, some people just get stuck in indecision, right? I really want this, but it's $2,000. I got to pull up credit card. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh my goodness. Your last bonus should be the most powerful thing that you can give them. And you only want to give away three or four, maybe five of them. This gets people off the maybe fence because they have to act right now. So you need to figure out what that is. Um, what is the biggest thing that you can give them to get them moving forward? Then you can actually call that out. So when you get to a little bit further down, let's say you've got five people that are listening. Hey, I only have one of those left. Joe, I've seen you've been nodding your head. You're obviously really into this. Why aren't you taking action? There's one left. I really want you to get this. I know it'll help you. So I'm going to call out one other thing that Zig Ziglar talked about, which I think is, I've, I've heard this stated a couple different ways, but the key to sales, right, is that transference of energy. But what is really going on, when you try to convince somebody to buy, you're pushing on them. But when you convince yourself that you are the best at something, it's a subtle difference that changes sales. When we start saying, I am 100% sure this is the right answer for you, it is going to help you get from where you are to where you want to go. When you buy my product, it is going to solve this problem for you. And I am 100% certain and I am crystal clear, people will buy 
because they want to know what people are really looking at you for is does can this person help me and when you push on them you come across as for lack of a better term needy i need you to buy i need you to do this but when you just say i know this solves the problem i know what i do will work for you it's worked for this person over here who had a similar problem to you it's worked for this person who had a problem that was similar to yours as well i know what i do will work just from what you're telling me you're telling me that you want to lose weight you want more energy and you want a diet program that you can do in 30 minutes or less a day i know my problem my program works for you when you buy my program, you will get the outcome that you want. That like that is attractive instead of pushing on people. So you can do this at the end of the webinar. Yeah, absolutely. Those are all fantastic points. And and hanging around and just having a bit more of a chat with people. I've seen that have seen that on a lot of webinars, and those are the ones that I see that are converting the, the highest because you're actually um, demonstrating, not just saying you can do it, but you then move into demonstration of this is how I can help you. If you're doing things like hot seats and actually helping somebody solve a problem in that moment, then of course they're going to be like, well, you helped me solve this problem. I wonder what else. It's almost another open loop, right? It's like You helped me right now. What else is there in this program there? You have to be able to help me with? And that's exactly what you want to, want to be doing so that when they actually join the program, they're joining your coaching, they are ready to receive the what's next. Awesome. Well, look, Steve, we have, man, we could talk about this all day and for hours and hours because it is such an, like, I'm a bit geeky when it comes to this sort of stuff because it's really an interesting topic. It, I know it works. It has um, served me very well and my clients very well uh, in their businesses as well as the people that we help because this is just simply is another mechanism, another vehicle to spread your message, to be able to get out what it is that you do to help other people utilizing webinars and putting it in the right framework like steve is talking about is extremely powerful so if you ha if you haven't uh, already adopted webinars into your uh, into your business or into your sales process then i would highly recommend you do so um interestingly enough i want to finish with this steve because this is a question i get a lot particularly in my agency when i recommend hey we should be doing a webinar for this People say, oh, webinars, they're so overdone, you know, and particularly that perfect webinar, you know, scenario, um, you know, there's so many of that. It's The market is flooded with it. What is your, uh, what is your, your experience in the now with webinars? Of course, it's like they still work, otherwise you wouldn't be teaching them. But what is your um, response to somebody that says that? So, I mean, think about, think about anything, any sales process. Are discovery calls overused? Well, overuse is a pretty, do they work? Do people buy? So I would say, so this is the, you're going, show up rates for live webinars are definitely going down. We're seeing about a 20% average show up rate for webinars. There is some webinar fatigue for sure. Everybody has been stuck at home. They're all learning through Zoom. But here's the thing. If you have something that actually makes a difference in somebody's life, you can do it. You can teach it through a webinar. If you create raw curiosity and get people on, they will consume it. If you run a VSL, people will consume it. If it solves somebody's problems, this is the other thing that like people don't realize. Although people have been stuck at home and they're consuming a lot of content, they're consuming more content. YouTube views have more than doubled with the pandemic. More than doubled. Has time at home more than doubled? No, but it, people's consumption has more than doubled. People's consumption of webinars has more than doubled. Have the amount of webinars going out more than doubled? I don't know. I don't think so. So you know what? If you're dedicated to your business, it's like the people who tell me they don't want to send emails. Well, there's so much email going out. My email open rate's over 20%. So that means one out of five people on my list is opening my email. Should I be sending an email every day? Absolutely. Like anyone who tells me, oh, I don't want to send emails because I don't want to bother people. You're not, you, this is the ego clause, just like we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Your yep. ego yep. is, you're too worried. 
about your ego being bruised and, oh, somebody might think that I'm marketing. Well, you know what? If you want your business to succeed, you should be marketing. People should know that you're marketing. If you're putting out stuff that is valuable to people, that's the difference, right? If you're putting out junk, if you're spamming people, like literally spamming people with like stuff that doesn't matter, that's why you feel guilty about it. Deliver value, speak your message, and to like change people's lives. I mean, that's what is my brand? Take action, change lives, make money. That's that's the order that it happens. When you take action and you deliver value, you will change lives. And when you change lives, you will make money. Well said. And that is that is the truth. And that is if you if you put the intention and the focus in the right place, it's not this way. It's you know, it's you want to be focused on your audience, you do the right thing. The right things come to you. So firm believer of that. I want to say thank you so much, Steve, for being here today because there have been so many wonderful gems that you have dropped uh, and shared with everybody freely today. With you know, and and I want to make sure that people know where to go and find you if they want to. Um, they want a bit more help with crafting their webinars, crafting their hero story, understanding what stories to put in their webinar, how long it should be. All of those questions that we've explored today. Uh, where can they find you? Where's the best place for them to go? Sure. So I'll give you two different things. Uh, the first one, if you want my free webinar course, I have five videos and five worksheets that will take you through this. You can go to death to bad uh, That will take you there. You can download that. You'll get on my email list. If you know that you need help with building your webinar, if you know that you need help with your hero's journey story, uh, you can go to steven.coffee, S-T-E-V-E-N dot C-O-F-F-E-E. -E. That will get you on my calendar. If you book time with me, I expect you to show up. We'll talk about what it would look like, how this would work, um, how I can help you. If you have a webinar that's not converting the way that you want it to, I'll go through it with you. We'll talk about it on there. Um, and I'd be happy to help you out. Those are the two places that you can find me. Uh, any way I can help you out. I love serving people. I love seeing people have breakthroughs and I love seeing people make money because that's what matters the most. And you're good at it. So that's that's also true. Have I got that uh, that email, oh, sorry, the web address correct at the bottom there, death2badwebinars.com. Yep. All right, guys, now you know where to find Steve. So if you want some more assistance with, uh, with crafting your webinar and all the other components that go with it, um, then I would recommend you go and see, you know, you have a, have, take Steve up on his offer, have a chat with him. Um, the other thing that I just want to finish on, and, and I should have asked this a little bit earlier, how much time does it normally take to craft a really good webinar? How much time should somebody invest in that? I would say it's probably 20 hours. There you go. 20 hours to get it all done. And then I would say, so if you've presented a lot, you can maybe get away with one or two run-throughs. I recommend people do five run-throughs. And the fastest way to get good at your presentation, video yourself, and it, the first time you do it, it's really painful, but just watch it. Yeah. Because when you watch it, you will, you'll learn. Like you'll remember what you were thinking in the moment of presenting. You'll be like, oh, I totally got that wrong. And it will fix. It's painful at first. Um. Robin's putting in there steven.coffee.com. It is steven.coffee. Believe it or not, dot coffee is a, uh, I don't know what they call those things, but it's a steven.coffee. Um, I thought that was kind of fun. Anyway, the uh, so 20 hours to build it all out. That's roughly an estimate. I've seen people do it faster. Most people take a little bit longer, but 20 hours and then do it two or three times. Watch yourself do it. You'll get better so much faster and then do one live. Do one live to a small group of people. You'll get comfortable after you've done it live two or three times, then you can turn it evergreen through a VSL. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Before we, before we, uh, you know, wrap this up for today. Is there anything else that you would like to leave our audience with? Is there anything that we have not covered that you just want to make sure we get across? We've covered so much, but. No, I think, uh, I think we covered a lot. I mean, one to many sales, whether you're doing it through a webinar, whether you're doing it speaking in front of small groups in your local town, nothing will grow your business faster because by building this presentation, you now have tons of content. You're gonna have 20 to 30 stories that you can use in emails and social media and Facebook lives in any conversation that you have. I mean, I keep, 
a flashcard deck on my desk and I constantly write out the stories and I go through them. I've done this since I was, since I started this business because little stories help people frame things in their mind and get people to lean in. So learning all of this through a webinar, not only will help your business grow through the webinar, but there are so many side benefits of presenting in a one to many format. You should definitely be doing it. It will help you speak your message. It will help you get clear on what you do and it will help you ultimately change people's lives and make money. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for being such an amazing guest. Thanks, everybody, for watching another episode of The Unlock Show. As I always say, we always finish this with you must go and live your life unlocked because there is just no other way. I'll be back again on Friday. You'll see me. I'll be in another spot. So if you're watching this live or you listen to the podcast, well, I'm traveling at the moment, so you'll see me in a motel room is the next uh, location that we will be streaming live from. And hopefully I'll, um, I'll get this uh, lighting sorted out. So I'll see you guys again Friday. I'll be back. For another episode of Unlocked with Tracy Wilson, my pleasure to be here at 10 a.m. Brisbane time this Friday is where you can tune in again. So I want to say thank you very much and bye for now. See you guys.